a delight today to have with us here Dr. Eric Hombo. He is a trained internist and is the Chief Medical Officer of American Board of Internal Medicine. And, but he's better known as the leader in medical education, in particular assessment and evaluation. Hello Dr. Hombo. Hello. Thank you for coming to Singapore again. Okay, maybe we'll just start off with a simple question. How do you think the clinical assessment will help to improve the clinical skills of the trainees? I think assessment is a critical part of any educational process. As the old adage goes, assessment drives learning. So assessment is a critical component for both determining where a trainee is, but also necessary for providing the critical feedback to help them get better. And so assessment in general is really important from a learning perspective, and we've known that for a long time. The important piece is to figure out what the right assessments are so that we can give good feedback and really help trainees develop their full potential. In terms of assessment for trainees, how do you think that will help to improve the teaching and the training method of the educators? Well, I think assessment is not only helpful for the trainees, but assessment provides a feedback loop also into the program and to the educators. In other words, is my trainee acquiring the knowledge, skills, and attitudes they need to be a successful physician? And if they aren't, is that a reflection on the curriculum or the teaching methods not being effective enough to help them acquire those skills? I'll just give you one small example. Um, from many years ago, we had put into place a curriculum to teach residents preventive um, medicine skills, immunizations, how to screen for cancer. It turned out that one of our faculty had to take a leave of absence and that part of the curriculum wasn't taught well by the substitute teacher. When we subsequently did an assessment using standardized patients, all those trainees who had the substitute teacher actually did much more poorly on preventive medicine. And that was a signal to us that the curriculum for that group of trainees wasn't working and it wasn't really their fault that they hadn't done well on the assessment. So it's a feedback loop both to the trainee but also to the program to help the program get better as well. So it not only affects the trainee's performance but does it really affect the clinical outcome, the patient care? I think that's the ultimate goal, particularly in a competency-based model. The, the important conception for me of competency-based medical education is that it starts with what the needs of the population and the health system are. That's a fundamental shift for us and I think a very important one. And so by determining what the local needs are here, for example, in Singapore, you then design the competencies necessary to provide good care. And that you hope by assessing those competencies that are linked to what the population and the health system needs, that you will concomitantly improve trainee skills and also improve the quality that patients receive even in a teaching institution. I feel very strongly that educational and clinical outcomes have to be tightly linked together. And so if they're not, then both trainees and patients are not going to get what they both need. Yes, that's very important because our core mission is still good patient care. So what do you think is the new emerging trend in medical education globally? I think there are several. Um, the one that we've talked about already, I think the overarching trend is everybody's moving toward a competency-based medical education system. This is a worldwide phenomenon. It's very exciting to see. And what's driving that is really, again, all these systems need to have physicians coming out of the training pipeline that can meet the needs of their population and their health system. And so aligning the competencies with what the needs, the future needs of healthcare are, I think is really exciting. And that's been in process for a while, but I think in the last 10 years we've really seen that blossom. And Singapore, by the way, is a wonderful example of a country that's taken on this transformation and really embraced it for the benefit of improving care. So I think that's been a really important trend. The other big trend, I think, in assessment itself, we have come off a long period of where the psychometric paradigm, or using mostly numbers to grade, have really predominated our assessment. All of our rating scale, uh, scales, such as the mini clinical evaluation exercise, our faculty evaluation forms, have mostly just asked faculty to circle a number. And that's been helpful, but it's been insufficient and it really hasn't helped us get to where we need. So the big trend now is to recognize how important what some people call subjective, but I would call more descriptive or narrative type evaluation is really now becoming very important. 
and some of our major leaders in the field like Case van der Vluten, Brian Hodges, Lambert Shuworth and others have really highlighted that it's the description of what people can and can't do that ultimately is most important and that those can be just as reliable and valid as if you assigned a number to it. The descriptive or narrative type approach to evaluation also provides a rich description to provide feedback to our trainees. So for example, if I say to you, um, Professor Ku, you're a five this week on clinical skills. Next week, could you be a six? You'd look at me and go, I have no idea how to do that. How do I get from a five to a six? If I describe to you what you did well, but also things that you need to improve, such as how you examined the heart, the way you ask questions of the patient, that's information you can use to actually improve. And then I can function as a more effective coach by providing that description instead of just simply telling you you're some sort of number. And that's, I think, the big shift that we're making. And, and it's not that numbers are bad or that psychometrics isn't useful. Tests are still very valuable. For example, in Singapore, you just gave your first certification exam in internal medicine, and we're very excited about that. And your trainees did very well. That was also very exciting. And so that helps us to know that they have a foundation of knowledge moving forward. But it's not enough, right? We know that they need these other descriptive type evaluations to really help them get better. And that coaching piece from faculty would be really critical. That is very useful information for faculties and for educators. And thank you for very insightful sharing.